Hey y'all, Gary Calger back here again. I'm gonna show a little short uh, tutorial here. How to make buttons for your homemade strings instruments for the straps without going out and buying expensive buttons. Cause them little buttons are expensive. I mean, really expensive. And uh, I found a new way of doing it. And also a very cheap way of doing it. Get this, they're only about 18 cents a piece where I got them at Ace Hardware. And uh, I've been doing this for quite some time now, and I just never got around to making a video for it. So I'm going to make this for Facebook and uh, also for YouTube. Now, I think my video's around backwards because I got the thing where I can see myself, and I don't always like that. But uh, beside the point, uh, it's very simple to do if you have a drill press or a vise that you can file with uh it will work pretty good but uh, what i'm doing is taking a quarter inch uh carriage bolt which is one of these and this is what it looks like before i start on it see it's got the squared head on it there let me get it up here a little well, right there. You can see the square part on We don't want that. That will cut your strap and wear out your strap. So what I've done, I put it up in the drill press and uh, rounded it off where it's completely round. I also shined it up. And it was funny. I can't get it focused there, but anyhow, it's backwards on there. But they're lettering on it for the stamp for the company that made it. You know, it, it says GAC. And I thought that was cool. Great American country. You know, I thought that was really cool. But anyhow, we're taking a standard quarter inch carriage bolt. They're about uh, three quarters to an inch long. I think, let me get my scale out here and I'll tell you exactly how long it is. Okay, right here, of course it's going to be backwards, they're about an inch long, so that's what you got, carriage bolt, inch long carriage bolt. Now, what we're going to do, let me get the camera turned around here, what we're going to do Is we're going to chuck this up. Let me see if I can get some white background back here or something. Get this turned away a little bit. Uh, I'm going to have to turn this fan off. It's blowing my background away from me. Let's see there. There we go. Now what we're going to do, we're going to chuck this up into the drill press. If you don't have a drill press, you can still do it by holding in the vise and going around and rounding it off. But it's very simple to do. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a square file. Take a square file. Kind of rough there, but it's not real rough. It's not a real fine bit type square file, but that's what I'm going to use. Turn the drill press on. It's going to get a little noisy. Then we're going to take and put it on there and round them corners off. You don't want to run your drill press too fast because it'll gum your file up. You just want to run on the lowest speed you can get. I think mine's uh, 500, no, 700 RPM is what it is. I like to have it even lower than that, but But I could probably change the uh, pulleys around on the jewel. You could probably even chuck it up in a regular hand drill to do this. Now, then I take some rough grit. I think this is, uh, yeah, this is 60 grit sandpaper. 
and I want to somewhat get all that zinc off that head on that. Get the zinc off the head. Then we're going to take a Scotch Bright pad. And I think it's the 120 red Scotch Bright pad. We're going to shine that up. Shine it up. I believe that's probably good enough. I see, uh, got it rounded off. There's no sharp corners on it. Matter of fact, even shined the head up really nice on it there. Now, I'll show you what we're going to do. I've already pre drilled and done one in my, uh, Coffee can tin top banjo here. Let's see if we can't get this thing. I'm going to try to get this thing turned a little bit because I don't like it on the edge there. Okay. Now, I've already got one in the back right there. And what you want to do, what you want to do, Drill your holes on the angle of how you're going to play. This here is probably on just about a 30 degree angle with the head, the neck going up away from me there. So we got about a 30 degree angle. And you want to drill this hole, the first hole here with the drill bit, a 64th under. And like I got my bodies on here, I can go pretty deep on. I went about almost two inches deep. So I didn't, I wouldn't bottom out with the uh, screw. Now, after i done that, I drilled a 64th under a quarter inch. Then I took a quarter inch drill and drilled it with the quarter inch drill. Now, generally... These carriage bolts come just a hair bit oversized. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to thread this down in there by hand. And they're pretty tight going. You don't need glue on these or anything. So I got that in there. I'm threading it in. Now, that's as far as I can go by hand. Right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get me a, a pair of pliers. And you don't have to clamp down tight on it. You don't want to mar this edge going around there. Because it will uh, damage your strap. So what I'm going to do is take a pair of pliers and work it on down in there. Like I said, they're not real tight. There it is. So, that's how you do it there. But let me get this camera back up here because I don't like that thing hanging down there on an the edge like that. And stuff here. So, I'm going to take and get that screw down in there. Like I said, they're pretty snug, but not snug enough that uh, it's going to give you any problem trying to get it in. Uh, let me get a different pair of pliers here. I hate going from the top like that. I like going from the side. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Yeah, I can almost, almost put it in there by hand. Matter of fact, I can there. It more or less threads itself down in there. And like I said, you do not need glue. Now it's getting down to the place where that uh, square part on the carriage bolt is. 
and it'll get pretty tight right there. So I'm going to, and you don't take that thing clear down. You want to leave about an uh, eighth inch gap, no, a little bit, about three sixteenths gap. You just want to go down to the square on the carriage bowl where the square was. And uh, make sure you don't mar up your finish. Now, I got a lot of my pliers. I took uh, files and rounded them off for that purpose so they do not dig into the wood in there. Now, I've got that down to the square on it, as you can see. Let me get my arm more steady here. When you get older, you start shaking too much. So, I got it down there, and that's what it looks like. Now, I can take my strap, and I don't have my strap out here. Just bear with me one minute, and I'll bring out a strap. Okay, I'm back. Now these uh, buttons that I put on here, they will not harm your strap or oversize your strap or anything because the diameter that it's going to be going around is actually a little bit smaller than some of the buttons I put on some of my other instruments. But the head of it is a whole lot bigger. And the uh, reason I really like it that I've been out playing before, and I like to put my banjo around my back or something like that and walk around. I had a bad happening one time. Uh, thank the Lord that it didn't damage it too much, but it done some chipping on the, uh, the uh, key uh, part of it there, up there on the keyboard. And uh, the strap come loose and fell into the gravel. The instrument fell into the gravel. And I'll tell you what, I... My heart just went clear to my feet because I thought when I turned around, I was going to see a busted neck, but I did. It, it hit in such a way, it just damaged a lot of the end, and it was a regular new banjo. But this uh, right here, I just got a regular uh, strap here and uh, stuff there, and I'll just show you how easy it goes on there. It's not really tough to go on. And... Uh, let me get it on there. Like I said, sometimes uh, these are better. These are better. It ain't coming off. I'm telling you right now, I'm jerking on that thing sideways. And bring it up around there and get it on the other one. This will fit just about any any uh, guitar or banjo, or whatever, and everything. And I like stuff as solid. It ain't going to come off. Okay, now we're on there. Now I can solder this thing up. Get that strap around there. Where I can play it right there. There you go. About 18 cents a piece, depends on where you go at. I'll see as low as 13 cents a piece. And uh, like I said, all they are is carriage bolts. And you round them off with the file, shine them up and everything. Like I said, they shine up real well. They're on there really tight and stuff there. And uh, you can do a lot of good playing. Like I said, this is a uh, coffee can tinja, what I call a four stringer, more like a tenor. But, but they sound just like a regular banjo.
on their goods and secure. So don't be going out spending $13 a piece for guitar strap buttons. I just showed you how to do it. Easy done. And you can see I've done this within 15 minutes of the video. So y'all take care. Jerry Calger signing off. See y'all next time. God bless. Bye-bye.